of the spring in meters. Zero point means that still there is no force being applied. If there is no force applied, there won't be any extension. So zero and zero. The force is zero, the extension is also zero. So the graph of the force and extension starts from zero. When you start increasing the force, at the same time, at the same amount of the increase we have on the extension of the spring. You see, they are directly proportional to each other. It means that this part of the graph is following the Hooke's law. At this point, A and B, after the, pro um, after the limit of proportionality, the limit of proportionality means that it's the, uh, the extension of the spring is not following the Hooke's law anymore because they are not directly proportional. Here, uh, there is a curve. Still, there is extension of the force, but the extension of the spring uh, is not actually corresponds to the force exactly and is less than before. Until it reaches to the point B, which is limit of uh, elasticity or the elastic limit. At this point, it means that it has reached its maximum extension. The more uh, it is extended too much, that it, uh, spring actually uh, cannot be any more uh, longer than this. But at this point still, if you release the load, you remove the load from the spring, the spring can go back to its original shape. But here, between B and C, if you continue adding the load to the overextended actually uh, uh, spring, what does that mean? It means that the spring will become broken or we have to reach, we have reached to the failure point or the breaking point of the spring or elastic object. And the other diagram here, you can see, we said that, uh, we will see that the greater the limit of purpose, the, the greater the k or the uh, spring constant, it means that the stiffer the spring or stiffer the material that the spring is made of it. So, you look at these two diagrams here. It's one of them, it means that the material object is very stiff. The object that it, um, is made of very stiff material and the other softer, softer material. This is force over extension. You see, in a stiff material, you need to apply a lot of force to do the same extension as the softer um, object here. But in a softer spring, by a little bit of the force, applying a little, a small amount of the force, you can do a very um, great extension. And another thing that we have to know is that is the gradient of this uh, extension load graph with force and extension will uh, give you the spring constant. You can find the spring constant by finding the gradient of this curve in the force and extension graph. We have the diagram of the spring here. Imagine that the spring is actually hanging from support. Um, from the ceiling. And then uh, um, this is without adding the load here, this is the original length or the initial length of the spring. I call it as Li or the length of initial. And uh, whatever it is measured in meters or centimeter, you can measure and you can find it and write it here as the or initial length of the spring. After that, you apply one Newton force here. For example, one Newton is applied, the load is attached to the end of the spring. 
Now here, there are two forces acting on the spring. One pulling it down, which is the force of the gravity and the weight of the object which is hanging here. This load is pulling down the, uh, the spring and the other force is pulling the spring up, a restoring force, pulling the spring up to, um, uh, to return it back to its original uh, shape. We call it as restoring force, which is in the positive direction. And there is another force acting on it in the negative direction. It is the force of the uh, weight of this object. Now, this force, this load, causes the spring to be stretched and its length increases. The increase in the length, okay, uh, we can uh, measure this, the length of the spring after applying this force. We call it as the length, uh, final length of the spring. I call it as the first final length because this is the first, uh, the first time I put the load here. LF1. The extension or the change in the length of the spring after applying a force of 1 newton can be um, calculated by the extension for the first load equals to the, the length of the spring or the final length of the spring minus the initial length of the spring. This one minus this one. This is the change, the change in the length is called as the extension of the spring after applying one Newton force. Then after that, we can continue adding more force. The force of 10 newtons is added this time to the spring. The, uh, we can measure the length of the spring and find the final length, the second final length we have here. And in, to find the extension of the spring at this stage, you can do this. The length of the spring, the final length of the spring, here in the second stage, minus the initial length of the spring. It will give you the extension for the 2 newtons load. What is it? From here to here. This one is the extension for the second uh, load that we have applied on the spring. If you continue, you can see that the extension and the load they are directly proportional until a limit of proportionality is reached. It means that it doesn't follow uh, the, uh, this uh, proportionality anymore. Same increase you have in the uh, for this extension uh, when you apply uh, the force here. I will give you one simple example to you to understand the extension, uh, how to calculate it. Um, there is a table given to you, and in this table we have the load on the spring each time, and the length of the spring is measured and written inside, and after that the extension, and the column that you have to fill in some of the boxes that are missed. Um, it says that when we do not apply any force on the spring, the original length is 10 cm. You have to calculate the extension. If there is no load, so we don't have any extension here, then uh, the original length we have is on what the LF and the LF and the LI are the same because there is no load applied. So the extension, um, as I told you, is the uh, length of the final minus the length of initial, and then it becomes 10 minus 10 equals to 0. So, this. The extension for this load is 0 because there is no load applied. One newton, after applying one newton of the force, so the length changes, if you measure this time, to 
12. We have an increase in the length. What is the difference between the final length and initial length? In order to calculate the extension, so 12 minus 10 equals to 2 centimeter. 2 centimeter is the extension of the spring after applying a force of the 1 newton. Now we applied a force of 2 newton. And what well, the length is not measured, but I know that the length of the spring is changed in, uh, uh, is to 4.5 cm uh, longer. It gets longer for 4.5 cm. This is the extension or the change in the length of the spring after applying this force. So I have the extension and I have the initial length which is 10 this is the final and this is the extension now you have to calculate and find how much it is it should be 14.5 centimeter after applying 2 newton force on the spring the spring length has changed to this now, uh, for the last one, we have 6 cm increase in the length, so 6 plus 10 becomes 16, which is the change, uh, the final length of the spring after applying a force of chain.